The following video is not great and I was going to refilm it today but then I thought well it kind of illustrates what I was talking about about the gear matters so the following video was shot yesterday it's basically out of focus you can't see the things I'm holding up I waffle on too long <laughs> I need to work on that this year to shorten things and also the sun basically disappeared so I had it on manual ISO and yeah so instead of auto exposing and correcting it got darker and darker and darker so I had to uh, boost it in post so hopefully this kind of illustrates what I was talking about about the uh, the gear matters and with the 6D you don't get any auto f uh, features. Yeah, hope you find this video interesting. This actually is shot on the G7X Mark II, so this is actually the uh, built-in audio. Yeah, so let me know what your thoughts are. This is an unscripted video, so forgive me if I uh, ramble on a bit. <laughs> okay, so I want to start a new series of gear matters. I know it's a bit of a controversial subject but for me I actually think that gear does matter and in this series I want to show my reasoning why. So the first video in this series is going to be about a camera that is a year and a half old now I guess and something that I have had for six months and that is this, the Canon PowerShot G7X Mark II. So, when I first started this YouTube channel, most of my videos were filmed on the Canon 6D, which I'm filming this on now. And it is a great camera, it's a full frame camera, but for stills it is absolutely perfect. But for video, it's got a few lacking features. One great feature is the built, um, sorry, the facility to put an external microphone in. So at the moment I'm using this basic cheap microphone. Hello. <laughs> and forgive me, I'm actually sat in a conservatory, so that's probably why the audio sounds a bit tin. But one of the, the main lacking features on this video is the um, autofocus, or guess the lack of autofocus in video. So yeah, for me, uh, the lack of autofocus on the Canon 6D was a bit of an issue. Um, and in some of the gear review videos or the videos I'm doing where I'm showing something, um, yeah, the, the 6D just didn't really have the autofocus. So at the moment, I'm sitting here, I'm at uh, f5.6, it's manually focused, so if I'm to move closer to the camera or to put things up in front of the camera, you won't be able to see that because it's out of focus. And again, I'm not sure of the focal distance that I have, so if I was to move out of the scene, then the camera is not going to track me. Fast forward uh, six months and I was researching cameras to buy and some of my criteria on a camera that I wanted was um, something that I could run around with that had autofocus, um, keeping my bags, the run and gun kind of camera because I didn't know what I would be doing and to lug around a setup with the DSLR and the shotgun microphone um, yeah just at the time wasn't something that I kind of like thought was needed for me anyway. So what I'll do is I'll um, say some good points and some bad points. So I'll run through all the good points first and then um, follow those up with some bad points and I'll intersperse it with some video so you can see kind of things I'm talking about. So again please forgive me I have things written down so I'm just going to go off the list. Um, for me choosing this camera and living with it for the last six months I've compiled a list of features that I think um, are good and bad and in the end I'll give my review on whether I think it's still a viable option in uh, 2018 and one of the reasons is basically because it's still available to purchase. So one of the criteria I was looking at, again like I said, was a small form factor. Um, at the time I didn't know what I was doing and where I was going to be and 
this became a contender because I could leave it in my bag and if I was out where I'm working or in the gym um, then it was small enough to keep in there and I didn't really have to worry about it. A second feature um, and again as I've alluded to is the autofocus. So autofocus was a big kind of feature that I really was looking for. Another reason that I looked at this one was the flip screen. I know it's a daft thing, but again, when I first started this YouTube channel, it was for me to really track my progress. It wasn't really um, to become a famous YouTuber or whatever, but I did look at a lot of YouTubers' videos and things that they were talking about, like the flip screen, and with the Canon 6D, yeah, I haven't got a clue if I'm in focus or if I'm framed correctly. Um, without having to keep stopping the video and going around and checking, which if you're just wanting to sit down and do a talking video to, you know, to the camera, it could be a bit annoying. So flip out screen was a definite kind of like plus. And this one, with it being flipping up to the top as opposed to flipping out to the side, I don't know, you maybe tell me, but in some of the videos, I'm actually finding myself looking at this screen. Um, and I don't think it looks too bad. It doesn't look like I'm purposely looking away. Um, so that was actually uh, quite a nice added bonus. With the uh, autofocus on this, this camera does actually allow you to program in uh, faces. So it has facial recognition for up to nine faces, I believe. So when I actually point this camera at me, there's a square comes around me and it says my name. So I know that I'm in focus, which is absolutely fantastic. And I suppose if you've got a few friends that you regularly go out with, then having up to nine faces programmed into this camera um, was another nice little feature. Again, most cameras have it, even the 6D, but the uh, auto exposure was, was great. Um, most of the time I actually shoot this in auto mode. So again, I'm just picking it up, pointing it and running around making a video because if I'm in the gym, I'll just stick it down and I'll be doing my exercises and I haven't really got time or I shouldn't really be focusing on a video when I'm in the gym concentrating on um, the task at hand. So having something that can auto-focus, can track you and uh, auto-expose, um, it was a bonus. So that was another cool sound feature. This camera does have quite a few different modes on it. So you can shoot 24 frames a second, uh, 30 frames a second and it also does 60 frames a second. Looking at some of the other cameras like the uh, what is it the uh, Sony RX100 line to be honest 4k wasn't really something that interested me and that is for a number of reasons really. Uh, one my computer probably couldn't handle the files um, two the computer screen isn't a 4k screen so I would be looking at it at a lower resolution anyway and so for me 4K wasn't really something that I was really bothered about. So yeah, I ruled that kind of camera off the line. This one, it fitted most of the things and the price point was actually another bonus. In hindsight, I might have gone for the G5X purely because of the uh, viewfinder. For me, is a better way. Even though you take pictures on your cell phone with the rear screen, I just find it so awkward to try and take a picture with the rear screen. Um, it just It's something that I guess is a bit alien to me with being a, um, an SLR kind of shooter. It has a uh, built-in ND filter, which again is fantastic, so I can keep the frame rate low if it's in bright light, because this does have an f1.8 lens on it, so again it is pretty decent in low light. I will show some clips of when I first bought the camera. I did those typical YouTuber tests where you walk in and out of the house and uh, test the low light capabilities. Yeah, <laughs> we all do daft things every now and again, but me more than others, I guess. <laughs> yeah, one thing about the uh, G7X is its ability for uh, auto exposure. So at the moment I'm in a bit of an inside space and uh, as I turn around into a bit of a darker, it uh, corrects for it, which is really good. 
I'm just gonna wander inside and uh, this kitchen is really dark so we're gonna see uh, how well it illuminates me so as you can see pretty dark so it's wandering and yeah not too bad so <clears throat> all in all in a small package it is actually quite a nice little camera and some of the oh and another excellent feature is the uh, time lapse feature so you can program in the camera to do a time lapse and not like other cameras like the uh, Nikons where it gives you hundreds of JPEG files which then you have to manually or in a software package stitch together to make a movie this actually makes it into a movie and you've got the different settings so you can do it at different intervals like a second two seconds three seconds and it goes up to a 900 image uh, maximum file it's quite some time the only thing i did find when i was trying to do a sunset is i had to press it a couple of times to get the sun going down um, and each time you press on the shutter button it auto exposes so it did actually change the uh, the exposure a little bit which i guess is a bit of a pain another cool feature which again i don't know on this camera is i have no clue whether it is actually still recording so having a little red dot and knowing that your recording is another kind of like security feature that you know you're not actually waffling onto the camera for 20 minutes and you don't get any footage so i'm actually going to get up now and just check the screen to see if i am still recording <laughs> Ooh, ow. oh bonus we're still recording <laughs> and again i have not got a clue whether i am in or out of focus so yeah okay so cons of this camera i guess while i've said the auto exposure is a great thing um, sometimes it's caught me out where you're in the gym um, that's just for instance and i say i'm doing a squat or a deadlift so i'm going up and down um, the camera does change the exposure so when you're down it compensates for being darker and then when you back up it, it dampens down again for being brighter it's not a major issue but when you're editing it does look quite evident in the footage um, again i'll link some of the or i'll put in this video some of the footage of these things that i'm talking about so you can see the issues that i'm having one thing i have noticed i know this camera is a touch screen but sometimes going from the different settings, it can be a bit laggy, especially when you've gone from a still to a movie or vice versa, it comes up with busy and so it takes a little while for the buffer to clear. Again, I don't know, this has got a fast card in it, so I don't know if it's a card issue or what, so I'm still working on that one and uh, hopefully I'll find a workaround. But if not, it's just something that I have to keep in mind and I can't just do it that quickly. So, if I was to say this camera has, th that's four, <laughs> three. <laughs> so this camera has three um, kind of like major drawbacks and they are a lack of um, being able to plug a microphone into this. So this has caught me out on a few occasions. One, I'll show you a clip where I went up to the roaches and the wind noise was so terrible again in the Lake District at Christmas where you can't basically hear what I'm saying I was hoping that this bank of uh, some here that I could find and also with the microphone being on top you can get a, a wind muff kind of fur but that actually stands in front of the lens so or in front of the screen so you've got a flip up screen but you've got this carpet in the way so to me that sounds a bit daft but anyway yeah so the other issue with the microphone being on top when i was in the lake district the camera did get a little wet and it's not really a waterproof camera so the microphone um, again this footage was muffled all right, back to the car. Come on, focus. Right, now we're going to head off to uh, Coniston Water, I believe. But 
loving this mist on the hills. Absolutely stunning. The second biggest gripe I've got with this camera is the battery life. Again, I've only got this to go by, but if I'm walking around going doing vlogging, it, it lasts quite a while. If I'm at the gym and I'm doing a training video, say two hours, then the battery's gone before I finish. So it depends on your usage, I guess. Um, if you're a heavy user, definitely invest in two or three batteries. Um, because it eats through batteries. I guess that's because of the um, screen on the back being permanently on, so uh, yeah, that does eat batteries. And then the next gripe, I guess, is this camera at the time was the top of the line of the small form factor one inch sensor mirrorless cameras for Canon. But what it is lacking um, is the dual pixel autofocus. So there's been a number of times when it has actually struggled to find focus. And again, if I'm holding something up to the camera, it does have an issue kind of like finding focus on the camera, then finding focus on my face. There's a, a few times where I'm, I'm having to hunt and say focus. And that's been in a few, I've left that in a few videos. Um, there's been other times when I've actually physically had to turn the camera off fully because it just won't find focus. There's other times when I've actually been upstairs doing the talking head videos and it's just not focused at all. This camera, I guess in the G7X Mark III, would benefit drastically from the uh, dual pixel AF then I think that and a few other refinements would make this um, a great little camera so yeah in conclusion would I recommend this in 2018 um, yeah I guess it depends really on what you're wanting out of a camera if you're doing talking heads then I guess it doesn't really matter if you're wanting to go out and want to keep this in your pocket or um, in your bag, then yeah, this is a great little camera. Especially you know on a little tripod like this. The uh, this is the Manfrotto Pixie, so you can um, adjust it um, to do time lapses and stuff. And yeah, it's actually a great little camera. The inbuilt stabilization, which I didn't mention, is actually very good on this. So yeah, I guess it depends on what you're trying to get and what you're trying to do. If, um, if audio is a big concern to you, then this definitely isn't your, your bag. I know you could probably get um, like a Zoom H1 and a lavel mic, which would definitely help audio. And again, it's something that I might look into. But yeah, because this definitely picks up any ambient noise that's going on in the room or um, if there's music, it overpowers it, you know, and if you're sat here talking and you're breathing heavy, it does pick up the, uh, the audio. So I guess really it depends on what you're actually doing. For me, I think it is something that it is time to look for an alternative. I've looked at the Canon 80D and also now having seen um, Thomas Heaton's video, he's um, using the Canon 200D. So that might be another alternative, especially because again, you can plug in a microphone um, and you've got the interchangeable lenses. But what I might look at is the 80D because then I can use it as a second camera, as a backup. Yeah, having the 80D might work and it has the flip out screen as well. So that's another thing, another plus point for the 80D. I'm gonna keep this camera and again, use it for things like the gym and maybe some of the talking head stuff purely because of the autofocus. But yeah, in the long run, I think I'm gonna to update to something like the, uh, the 80D. So yeah, definitely recommend a great little camera if you know about the features like the wind noise and the autofocus and you can um, work around those, make allowances for that, then it's a, a great little pocket size camera. Um, again, one of the features that I didn't really talk about 
and um, and that is the stills. I personally wouldn't use this as a stills camera. It's just too clunky and it doesn't give me the feedback that I want from a camera. So yeah, I know this channel is more of a film related channel, but even doing YouTube channel, we are gonna be using tech and we're gonna be using cameras. So yeah, this um, new series that I want to do on Gear Matters, um, yeah, hopefully I'll showcase my point in the argument of why gear does matter. So I hope you find it interesting. If you have any feedback or any uh, comments, please leave them below. And uh, yeah, so yeah, thanks for watching.